This tutorial will look at the settings that affect how an audio clip behaves when it's warped. These are all found in the sample box of Audio Clip View. Firstly, the clip needs to be in warp mode with the warp button turned on, otherwise it will play back at its original speed, regardless of the project tempo. The box marked SEG BPM displays live's calculation of what the tempo for the clip is. Knowing the BPM is really useful information for a DJ. It will help you to plan the progression of tempo throughout your set and to choose in which order to mix your tunes together. Once you know the BPM, it's useful to rename the audio clip including this information so that you can clearly see it without having to open the clip info each time. Therefore, I'll now rename this tune with the tempo on the end of the name. Live is normally very reliable at getting the BPM right for a clip, but now and again it does get it wrong and thinks that the clip is either half or twice the speed it should be. This often happens on music such as drum and bass, when it will think that a clip that should actually be 170 BPM is 85 BPM instead. If you press the times 2 button, then this will rectify the problem. There are a number of different warp modes that you can choose from, and it's important to choose the right one for each clip, otherwise you might find that your clips don't sound right when they're warped. Beats mode is designed for drum loops and rhythmic samples. You should leave the preserve setting as transients for most situations. Tones mode should be used on long sounds such as vocals, keyboards, bass guitars and strings. These will normally sound much less processed in this mode. If you get undesirable sounds occurring, then this can be reduced by adjusting the grain size. Texture mode is designed for dense audio textures, such as thick keyboard pads, field recordings and orchestral samples. Repitch mode works in the same way that a vinyl record deck does, by altering the pitch of the sample according to the playback speed. This mode will give the best sound quality and uses very little processing power. However, it doesn't sound good if the sample is played too far away from its original speed. There are a couple of other drawbacks when using repitch mode. It's hard to mix in key, and you'll be unable to use the transpose function. The complex mode is the setting that is most clearly aimed at DJs. This uses a higher quality algorithm to stretch audio clips, and is designed for use on entire songs. Complex mode gives the most natural sounding result and will work well on almost any type of material. The thing to remember though is that complex mode is by far the most intensive on the CPU usage. So if your computer is struggling to keep up with you, then you should switch to using one of the other warp modes for some of your clips. In Live 8, Ableton has introduced a new warp mode which is complex pro mode. This offers even better results but again, this is at the cost of higher CPU usage. If you have high pitch samples, then it will sound best by lowering the envelope setting. And similarly, if you have low pitch samples, then you should raise the envelope setting. The default settings for how clips are warped are set by going to Preferences and the Record Warp Launch tab. The setting for loop warp short samples should generally be set to Auto. This lets Live make an educated guess as to whether or not to warp and loop the sample. Auto Warp Long Samples should be set to On, so that all long samples are auto-warped when they are imported into a project. 
However, if you're a DJ who doesn't beat match that often and just uses live to fade from track to track, you may wish to leave this function off. I would recommend setting the default warp mode to complex, unless you find that your computer is struggling to play all the clips reliably. You should set the create fades on clip edges setting to on. This enables a tiny fade at the start and end of each clip so that when they loop you won't hear any unwanted pops or clicks. Each time you import a loop, you should think about whether it needs to be warped and or looped. This can vary from clip to clip, so the next few points will give you an idea on when to or when not to use warp and loop. Long clips and songs that will be beat matched should be warped when they're imported. However, if you import in songs that won't be beat matched, then you can turn warp off. Short audio samples, such as drum loops and bass lines, generally need to be warped and loops should be turned on so that they can repeat. Some samples, such as symbols or spoken word samples, don't need to be warped and they don't need to be looped either since they only need to be heard once. Be extra careful. Samples, such as drum rolls and vocals, need to be warped so that they play in time but don't need to be looped since they only need to play once. That's it. That's all the settings you need to think about when warping your samples.